In 2017, a referendum on Catalonian independence sparked a group of response from the Spanish state, amid accusations that the politicians behind the poll were committing rebellion. Over the past four months, those charges have been levelled again in a controversial criminal trial, raising serious questions about the independence of the Spanish judiciary. We went to find out why. It's been called Spain's trial of the century. And it's divided the nation. 12 Catalan leaders accused of sedition and rebellion after calling a referendum on independence from Spain. The whole independence bubble is just going down. Normality is coming little by little to Catalonia. What we have seen is political repression and violation of fundamental rights. So now we have even more reasons to want independence. On the 6th of September 2017, the Catalan Regional Parliament took a vote which was to precipitate the biggest crisis in the history of Spain's relatively young democracy. El govern que tinc l'honor de presidir ha aprovat el decret de convocatòria del referèndum d'autodeterminació per al diumenge dia 1 d'octubre d'enguany. In the Spanish capital of Madrid, the decision to hold the referendum was met with outrage. The government, backed by the country's constitutional court, made clear the Spanish nation was indivisible. Calls for its breakup were unconstitutional. The referendum would be unlawful, and it would be stopped. In Barcelona's extensive docks, two incongruously decorated cruise ships arrived. Accommodation for thousands of state police drafted into Catalonia by the Spanish government. The scene was set for a major confrontation. On the 1st of October 2017, the morning of the referendum, more than two million Catalans turned out to vote in defiance of a huge police presence. Ballot boxes concealed in bin liners were brought to polling stations, guarded by volunteers. But the Spanish Guardia Civil were out in force. They smashed their way into polling stations in search of ballot boxes. Police personnel wearing balaclavas confiscated boxes and papers. whilst others physically stopped people voting. In Girona, where the Catalan president was due to vote, and in towns across Catalonia, the police operation was uncompromising. With remarkable disregard for the TV cameras and mobile phones recording everything they did, the police forcefully dragged voters from polling stations, seemingly regardless of their age or vulnerability. Many voters raised their hands in peaceful protest whilst others who sat on the ground in a bid to defend polling stations were dragged off by the police. Still more, 
offered flowers as symbols of peace. Outside one polling station, Ramon Yui Primary School in Barcelona, the police operation was particularly heavy-handed. One of the men caught up in it was a musician called Roger Espanyol. Y cuando llegué a la escuela Ramon Llull, que está aquí a dos minutos de mi casa, uh, me encontré con la policía saltando las vallas de la escuela para uh, buscar las urnas y quitarlas. Uh, con todo esto, uh, nosotros fuimos acompañándolos, uh, intentando uh, siempre de una manera pacífica recriminarles su actitud. When the police tried to leave with confiscated ballot boxes, Roger and others attempted to block their way. Creíamos que si estaban un minuto más ahí, no, no estarían otro minuto más en otra escuela haciendo lo mismo. But then the police began firing plastic bullets at the crowd. Roger was struck directly on his right eye. Paramedics rushed him to hospital for emergency surgery. Pudieron salvarme el ojo, el lóbulo ocular, pero no la visión, así que perdió la visión del ojo. Hundreds were injured that referendum day. Some seriously. Despite the police attempts to stop them, nearly half of the eligible population of Catalonia either voted or tried to. But the result of the referendum was controversial. People opposed to Catalan independence, like these demonstrators, had mostly boycotted the vote, although of the 43% of the electorate who did manage to cast a vote, 92% voted for independence. In truth, as far as can be told, Catalonia actually remains pretty evenly divided on the whole issue. In the tense days that followed, the Spanish government declared its intention to suspend the Catalan parliament. The Catalans responded by signing a declaration of independence. Three days later, Spain's attorney general made an announcement. Como fiscal general del Estado, les doy cuenta de que en la mañana del día de hoy, el Ministerio Fiscal ha interpuesto sendas querellas por delitos de rebelión, sedición, malversación y otros conexos contra los principales responsables políticos de la Generalitat de Cataluña. Of these charges, perhaps the most serious is that of rebellion, suggesting the accused instigated a violent insurrection against the state. Catalonia's Minister for Foreign Relations pours scorn on that allegation. The only violence that was on that day was perpetrated by the Spanish police troops, which were sent in 16,000 to uh, brutalize the people who were voting. But if found guilty of rebellion, the accused faced sentences of up to 25 years in jail. Some, including the president, Carles Puigdemont, escaped into exile. He's now in Belgium, from where he continues to campaign. But others, politicians and civic leaders, attended court as instructed, where they were refused bail. In total, nine were taken into custody, some spending 17 months in jail before the trial even began. Their lawyers condemned the refusal of bail as a crude attempt to silence them. My clients are in pretrial detention because the judge said that they didn't, like, stop their political careers. So we have some citizens, former political representatives, that are in jail because they are politicians. 
but Spain's centre-right, Parti Popular, in government when the charges were laid, comprehensively rejects Catalan claims this is a political trial and a denial of free speech. I know it's part of the narrative. It's part of the stress that the defense of the independentists has put in on the trial. But I cannot accept that. It's just propaganda. But I will never share any, any doubt about the independence of the judiciary at all. We are, we are a full democracy. There is no risk of freedom of speech. I think there is too much freedom of speech, too much. if I may say <laughs> yes, <Why>? because <laughs> everyone can say whatever with no consequences. That's a good thing. That's that a good thing? A, but that's the thing, that's freedom of speech. And here, there is such a freedom of speech here in Spain that you've heard everything on the contrary at the same time. So freedom of speech is not at risk in our Spanish democracy. Then, in June 2018, the Parti Popular government of Mariano Rojoy was forced out of office, leaving Spain's new centre-left Socialist Party government to defend the trial. But a propaganda video produced by the new government in a bid to redeem Spain's reputation abroad and featuring actor Richard Gere... This is the real Spain. ..was quickly mocked by pro-independent supporters. Hablamos de España. This is the real Spain. Esta es la España de verdad. Esta es la España de verdad. This is the real Spain. The new Spanish government's representative in Catalonia acknowledges that there was a problem. Yo creo que el gobierno de aquel entonces no no tanto la actuación concreta sino el diseño que se hizo de la respuesta fue la equivocada. But she defends the trial itself de que en este país, en España, no está nadie por encima de la ley. La justicia debe ser libre para poder trabajar y para tomar sus decisiones. Former Supreme Court judge Martín Payín has a very different view. Creo que nunca se debió llevar esto a, al mundo de, del derecho penal. Nunca se debió criminalizar. No es un crimen lo que pasó. Hubo violencia, pero uh, podría ser considerada como unos desórdenes públicos o como cualquier otra um, actividad delictiva, pero nunca, nunca como un delito de rebelión o un delito de sedición. On the 11th of February 2019, the eve of the trial, we traveled with lawyer Olga Ariu to Madrid One, a bleak jail outside the Spanish capital. Olga was meeting her client, Carme Forcade, the 64-year-old speaker of the Catalonian parliament, who, if found guilty, faces as many as 17 years in jail. Olga emerged from a final briefing with her client. Do you ever talk to her about the possibility of a long sentence and losing her freedom? No, we, we, don't. we still don't talk about, about that. We go step by step and we give hope. And when everything arrives, we will see what is the result and then we are going to face it. But we keep hope. The next morning, the media gathered outside Spain's Supreme Court. It's February the 12th and the first day of the historic Catalan trial here at Madrid's Supreme Court. It's a trial that will, in the next few months, put Spain's judicial system under the spotlight. Inside the court, judicial protocols and traditions were carefully observed. But outside, the atmosphere was very different. Far-right Spanish nationalists, including Franco supporters carrying Falange banners, hurled abuse at Catalan independence supporters standing silently facing them. Perhaps one irony, that on the streets at least, both sides agreed this trial was all about politics. And that was not the only thing undermining official attempts to portray this trial as free of political taint. Buenas tardes por la buenas tardes y gracias por la espera. 
Zismana from Vox, Spain's new, rapidly growing far-right populist party. Under an unusual provision in Spanish law, which allows citizens and organizations to act as people's prosecutors in some trials, Vox are now officially co-prosecutors of the Catalan 12, along with the state solicitor and the attorney general. It's political from the very beginning. You know, we have a case that's based on an, the, 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 you know, the, the criminalization of an ideology. And then we have a prosecutor, which is a political party, so everything is political here. The very next day, inside the Spanish parliament, another political crisis was brewing. To pass its budget, the government needed the support of the Catalan parties. They didn't get it. The Catalan parties sided with the opposition, and the government fell. A general election was set for April, and with it came yet another blow to the court's attempts to rise above the political fray. From their prison cells outside Madrid, several of the Catalan defendants announced they would be standing in the election. And Vox revealed that so too would both members of their prosecution team. So now these political rivals would face each other across the august stage of the Supreme Court. It's now six weeks until the Spanish general election, and tens of thousands of protesters supporting Catalan independence have massed here in Madrid. One of the organizations behind the march was the Assemblea Nacional de Catalonia, a pro-independent civil society organization. With two of its former presidents on trial, we spoke to its current president. They are accusing our leaders, legitimate and democratic elected leaders, of provoking the violence that, in fact, it was the Spanish police that did the violence during the referendum of the 1st of October. For these Catalans, the accusation of violence by voters flies in the face of the evidence. It's a charge they believe was trumped up to justify jailing their leaders. They think that that way people are going to be afraid to continue asking for the referendum and for the independence in Catalonia. So was the physical repression of the referendum and the arrest of their leaders really just an attempt to intimidate the Catalan independence movement into silence? The Party Populaire's Jose Hernández does little to dispel that idea. I think that those independents, they are going to face reality. Well, they're just going to be put into prison, so they won't I don't talk know. again. I don't know. I don't know. But really? they are going to face reality. And perhaps they will have to think it over or to think it twice. For, the, uh, for a different generation, because I think that was the end of the whole independence process. But around Catalonia, we found little sign of the independence campaign losing momentum. In exiled President Carles Puigdemont's sleepy hometown of Ama, his portrait still dominates the square. Even the grand presidential palace in Barcelona displayed a banner supporting the prisoners and exiles. Or it did, until Spain's electoral authority ordered the removal of all such politically contentious banners from public buildings during the election. The Catalans replaced it with a quote from the UN Declaration of Human Rights. However, when the jailed electoral candidate, Catalan Vice President Oriol Junqueras, was permitted a televised press conference from prison, the Spanish authorities placed the potent Spanish nationalist symbols of the Spanish flag and a portrait of the king in the background. The 28th of April, 2019, Election Day. 
inside the Socialist Party's Madrid headquarters, there was a mood of optimism, while an air of gloom hung over the Parti Populars as the votes came in. But across town, at a rally organised by far-right populists Vox, the mood was triumphant. Javier Ortega Smith, the charismatic ex-Special Forces Secretary General of Vox, who's also one of the Catalan trial prosecutors, appeared to rapturous applause. That night, Vox went from having no parliamentary seats to 24. Both Ortega and fellow trial prosecutor Pedro Fernández were elected. But by the end of the night, it was clear the Socialist Party of Pedro Sánchez had won enough seats to create a coalition government. The next morning in Barcelona, the Catalan independence movement was celebrating the election of its prisoner candidates to both Senate and Congress. Pedro Sánchez should listen attentively to the results in Catalonia. He should open a dialogue table and he should respect the will of the majority of the Catalan people. That call for dialogue was repeated at a press conference by the Catalan Independence Party, the ERC. Quien ha ganado en Cataluña las elecciones es un partido independentista. Por lo tanto, si Pedro Sánchez es un demócrata, como consideramos que es, debe atender esta este resultado de Cataluña. But a problem for Sánchez, even if he wants to reopen the dialogue, is what's happening in this building. Because whichever way this trial goes, the result could only mean further division in this country. Some suggest an official pardon might be the way out. But that would infuriate the Spanish nationalists and boost the fortunes of the populist right. Equally, a guilty verdict and long jail sentences would only ramp up anger in Catalonia and further fuel calls for independence. Creo que el, el juicio desde el minuto cero ha sido un juicio político. Susana Barreda's husband, Jordi Sánchez, is facing up to 17 years in jail. For her, the political can't be separated from the personal. Y hoy me preocupo de lo que hago hoy, de la entrevista que tengo contigo y de lo que luego tendré que hacer con mi hija, ¿no? Si la tengo que acompañar a la escuela de música, a practicar violín. Y esos son mis objetivos para hoy, porque si me pongo a pensar en qué pasará o si me, mi vida va a ser así durante 15 días, eh, me voy a derrumbar. For other Catalans, the state's reaction to the referendum has had a disturbing resonance. Bernard Pugradales is married to Carmen Forcaday, also facing up to 17 years in jail. Que van votar, van conseguir una cosa tan sencilla y tan bonita como votar. Bueno, la, la madre tiene 90 años, 90. Ha, ha viscut lo, lo de Franco, digamos, ¿no? Ha viscut lo de, ha viscut lo de Franco, claro. Y la seva memoria, pues, rememora la situación como si fuese en temas de Franco. Y, de fet es comportan de la misma manera, aquí está ya. There were hopes of compromise when the four new Catalan MPs were allowed briefly out of jail to take the oath of office, until two days later when the government made an announcement. La Mesa del Congreso de los Diputados ha acordado declarar automáticamente suspendidos a los excelentísimos señores don Uriol Junqueras y Vías, don Josep Rull y Andreu, don Jordi Sánchez. Two days after that, Oriol Junqueras was elected again, this time as a Euro MP. So, too, was Carles Puigdemont, although he's been told he'll be arrested if he goes back to take his seat. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court hearings have finally ended, and the accused are back in jail, awaiting the verdict, expected later in the year. The Catalonian government's ambition, meanwhile, remains unaltered. What we want is a deal with the Spanish government that allows people to decide. Those who think, yes, we can be a Catalan Republic, and those who think, no, we shouldn't be a Catalan Republic. And that requires a democratic solution. People must vote.